I mean, I don't know how true it is if he's not going to let it get to him, but again, that, that, that is a very good mentality to have going into a game, especially against a great player and Joe Rice, who many in the Madden community who I have respected for a long time, I'm talking top players like Young Kiv, uh, have told me that, you know, Joe Rice is likely one of, if not the most underrated players on the circuit. So th that is high praise from high-level uh, players th that you hear from Joe Rice. As we are underway, Nick versus Joe Rice. And Nick starting off with the ball first. Uh, an opportunity to set the tone, maybe get some momentum early in this game. Mike Vick at quarterback, three wide receivers over to the right side for net on his left hip. A lot of pre-play adjustments. It's going to be Fournette taking the carry over the right side. And he's going to pick up what looks like a first down at the 35-yard line. Fournette, an absolute bowling ball at halfback. And Nick, when I talk to him, Nick, when I talk to Nick, that's going to be Boy, a Boy, that's going to be awesome. That's I love gonna, that. That's going to be a lot of fun. But when I talk to him, he said one of the things that he wants to do is make sure that he can establish the run and try to slow the game down from the start to keep Joe Rice's offense off the field. He knows Joe has one of the most prolific offenses in the entire circuit. As you saw, Crush, who runs a similar offense, just put up, what, 38 points or whatever it is. So, as you can see him, he's sticking to his game plan early, running the ball, killing this clock, milking it away, and trying to keep Rice off off the field. So far, so good. We'll see if he can keep it up, though. Certainly a nice game plan coming in, controlling that time of possession. As after the seven-yard carry on first down, second and three. Nick and the Jags taking the snap, handed it off to Fournette up the middle once again. And uh, Fournette showing why he's selected by so many players. Tough to bring down, picks up those tough yards. Yep, and just so you know, I, I want to get it out the way so I don't forget here, Nick is our boy Nick is beast. He's going to run the New England offensive playbook, and his defensive playbook is going to be the New York Giants. Our guy Joe Rice is also going to be running the New England offensive playbook. Surprise, surprise, but he's going to have the multiple defensive playbook. Fournette with a carry once again, establishing the run game in Jacksonville as uh, Nick sticking to that game plan, RG. Yep, that's what he said. I must control the ball on O and limit Joe's possession. He says. He also said he feels he's seen Joe get out of his game if he doesn't have the ball a lot to get that high-powered offense going. And I mean, he has a game plan, and so far it's working very well. He needs to get upfield, though. The hill out of bounds at the 41-yard line. First pass play, maybe a little disjointed, but still picks up the first down as a nice throw over the speed freak, Tyreek Hill. Boy, Nick Hughes, 25 years old, from Charleston, South Carolina. He works full-time at a bank. And uh, he says, you know what? Even though I got the full-time job, I love this Madden stuff. I've put in the work. I've put in a lot of long nights. And it's all come down to this event right here. He's looking to take full, full capitalization of that. Yeah, you work at the bank. You get so used to being around money. I think he wants it. He wants to be able to take home some of the cash here at the Madden Club Championships. Establishing this time of possession on second and 14. Vic dropping back to pass. Looks over to the right side. Has a man. Ooh, Sanders. Room. Nice throw over there. Tight coverage, tight window. It's going to cut it down to a third and manageable. Yep, this is definitely a third and manageable. And it could be two down territory, depending on how Nick feels. Is it more important for him to get points, or does he really want to get the touchdown to try to keep up with Joe scoring? This is going to be a big play. Once again, those trips over to the left side. Dropping back to pass on third and three pressure. Oh, there. He throws he a pick yanked. over the middle. It's a big lurk, and he's returning all the way up to the 40-yard line. That's Brian Dawkins over the middle. A mistake early, the time of possession battle. Well, he used a lot of clock, but at the end of the day, he started throwing it, and uh, it turned into disaster. Yeah, I'm talking about are you going to keep the drive going? Are you going to settle for three? Joe Rice says, uh-uh-uh, none of that. How about I just take the ball back, all of the momentum, and that was a huge play by Joe Rice, a.k.a. Wesley Gittins, 20 years old, from Taylorsville, Georgia. As a timeout taken by Joe Rice. Uh, RG, I mean, four run plays in a row to establish this offense. You have to start throwing it, and you end up giving up a turnover. Does that 
sort of change your mindset going later into the game? Oh my goodness, it, it could put you in a mental pretzel, as our guys like to say. And you know what? That's something that if you nick though, you're gonna have to have a short memory. It's like real football in that regard. They tell the quarterback next play, short memory. It's the same yep. thing in Madden. Oh, oh, deep pass oh, over the top. Nice. Hill makes the catch at the seven yard line. 53 yards on that play into a tight window. And just like that, in a blink of the eye, if you looked away, boy, Joe Rice down at the seven yard line, red zone offense time. Yep, and remember, Joe, I told you, it's, it's super unique. I was shocked when I saw it. Literally running the same exact playbooks in the same exact lineup as Young Kiv, Sirius Mo, and Crush. So you have four people all with identical game plans in this tournament. The good thing for them is they all wouldn't face each other until Final Four at the latest, which is why they felt comfortable preparing on that level. Hand off over the left side, trying to punch it in from the seven. Gurley will pick up three and as you get down inside the red zone, everything gets a little bit tighter. It's going to be up to that Jags defense to get a big stop. Yeah, and I'll, I'll tell you what, it might not be any coincidence that Joe Rice did get his interception because he said he talked to the guys that Nick beat in the Jags club championship, and they told him that he was running gun trips tight end. He also knows that Spoto, who he might have to play in the next round, also runs gun trips tight end. So he's put a lot of focus on locking up that formation. Dangle back of the end zone. It's Tyreek the Freak Hill with a touchdown, two feet in bounds, and off the interception. A big touchdown for Joe Rice. As the kick is up, it is good. It's seven nothing. Joe's on top. Did you just call him Tyreek the Freak? I called him Tyreek the Freak. I Hill. like it, man. I like it. This is creative. I've always enjoyed your work too, Nick. For those that don't know, my guy he cast in the NBL, which was one of the best franchise leagues, the most passionate Madden gamers I've seen. I've always done a phenomenal job with him, as we see Joe Rice do a phenomenal job scoring this touchdown. But I wanted to make sure if you weren't going to do it, I'm going to do it. we got to shout out your guys in the NBL back there watching, supporting you on. We love what you guys do. We know they're all on watching right now, screaming at the TV as on first down. It's Fournette with the carry once again. And Nick trying to get back to his game plan, establishing that run game with Fournette. Yeah, Nick is beast. He, he's a guy, when we talked about Joke, who has all these elite route cams and these playmakers and the gunslay, the conductors. Uh, this guy, Nick, Nick is beast. He didn't go in on all that. The only ability he have is conductor on is Mike Vick, which allows him to make quicker hot routes at the line of scrimmage. But looking at his offense, it doesn't look like he's trying to quick snap or, uh, you know, rush things up like that. So it is a little interesting to see why he would go with the conductor with this run heavy type of game plan interesting too to see that it doesn't appear to be any panic on the side of Nick it's he's going to get back to that run game even with the early interception third and two Vic rolling out to the left side he's got some room he may take off he will indeed pick up the first down and slide down at the 38 yard line don't want to risk any more turnovers a nice first down pickup to settle down the offense on the side of Nick yeah Nick, I mean Nick had some some experience this is a guy who played some college baseball uh, for a while, he was an outfielder at Toka, Toka Falls College in Tacova, Georgia. So he's a, he's a guy that has been competing, and he says, I am able to stay even keel and not let my emotions get the best of me. Uh, and that's a very good trait to have if you want to play competitive man in football. As we have reached the end of the first quarter, an early 7-0 lead for Joe Rice over Nick. And uh, RG, early in this game, we saw Nick establishing that run game. But so many times we see in these uh, championship games uh, between the best players, it can come down to one or two mistakes and that interception on the first drive. I mean, that was a big turning point. Is Joe Rice able to turn that into seven? Oh, obviously huge. What's going to be even more huge is to see how to start the second quarter. How does Nick respond on this drive now that he's turned the ball over, given up seven? This is going to be what I call a momentum drive, Nick. He is going to need to go get himself points and get himself back to momentum so he can get back control of this game. But it is going to have to come down to him executing because a turnover would be abysmal for him. As we head to the second quarter, a reminder, we here at the Madden NFL 19 Championship Series. We're brought to you by Bose. Bose, the official sound of the Madden NFL 19 Championship Series. Here's the question, Nick. What do we got to do up here to get a pair of headsets like that? I want some for my I don't got a pair. I see, I I'm still using the earbuds, so I, I don't got no sound quality. I, those are, the players have told me they're nice headsets, and, and, and they, they're phenomenal, and they got good sound. Let me wet my beak. I think uh, I think you can tell how good they are because they don't hear us yelling over here. They're <laughs> locked into the game as we head towards the second quarter in uh, this AFC South matchup. 
Again, we appreciate everybody hanging out with us today on day one of the Madden 19 Club Championship. I'm Nick Mazesco, hanging out with RG. And RG, we're only like, what, an hour and a half into this. We've already seen some great action, some huge plays, and we got some big names coming up. You don't want to tune out because there are some matchups coming up tonight you don't want to miss. Oh, yeah, and this, let's be clear here. Everything accumulates and it ends at, at the Madden ball and people are focused and getting to the Madden ball. However, the players in this event are very aware that this tournament, this competition, the club championship, has the largest prize pool out of all of the events, $700,000. And you know, mo money's part of the motivation here. I'm not, I'd be lying to you if I said it wasn't. So this is a huge event for all of these guys, and they are very, very serious and well aware of that. So. They are feeling that pressure, that they know this is my biggest chance to make the most amount of money and potentially get myself a lot of points to secure for that modern ball at the end of the year. So it's big games, but they also have big, big implications. Let's head back to the game as they're ready to get underway with the second quarter. Joe Rice and Nick facing off. Joe Rice, a slim 7-0 lead, but we know that Nick's got the ball and uh, he's going to be looking to maybe redeem himself a little bit after the early interception on the first drive. As we are here in the AFC South, a fantastic matchup. We're so happy you guys are hanging out with us. First and 10 for Nick and the Jags. You're going to see this trip set so much, and you're going to see a lot of Leonard Fournette taking the carry up the middle. Only going to find one there, and so far the Texans defense done a nice job of containing Fournette. They're containing them, but Nick has committed to the run, and if he keeps committing to it, eventually you'll be able to break a big one. The problem is, if you let those one-yard gains discourage you and get you out of your game plan, that's when you can get into trouble, as you oh, see right God. there. Vic dropping right back, dropping back, dropping back, and dropping down, and that's a huge play for an offense that uh, is so predicated on running the ball, facing a huge third and long. Once again, those trips over to the left side. And just to be clear, you want to talk about Nick's passing game. He's having some trouble. He spent the lowest cap on wide receivers out of anybody else in this tournament. So when he gets himself in these situations, back it's going to be tough. And there it the is. Bad throw. It's picked off. And we're going the other way as the second interception of the first half. Joe Rice picking off the throw. And RG, it's never good when you see a quarterback throw him back across his body to the middle of the field. Oh, it, they tell you this in real life. You get an NFL coach tells you, hey, if he rolls out the pocket and he throws across his body to the other side of the field, it should be an interception, often an interception in real life, often an interception in Madden. Looking underneath, tight coverage on Sharp. An incomplete pass on first down. So a lot of plays being run by Nick early in this game. Uh, unfortunately, no points to show as two interceptions have derailed any sort of offensive momentum here in round one of the Madden 19 Club Championship. Second and 10, open. wide what open on the ball. right side. Yeah, to the running back. Great read. That's, That's a great read over there. It's no a really panic. good read. And if you're at home, when we show you the play art of Joe Rice when he's on offense, pay attention to it. He is known for having one of the best offenses on the circuit, one of the most respected offenses. So you want to pay attention to this type of stuff. Put it into your own arsenal. Use it in your game plan maybe as well. Oh, right up the middle doesn't seem to matter. Doesn't matter where he was throwing it. He was finding an open receiver as we saw that the receiver open up in the middle. Instead, he takes the out on the right side and picks up another first down. And so far, RG, this Jags defense having a whole lot of trouble handling the Joe Rice offense. Well, Joe just playing tough. I mean, the, D the nose tackle was coming free right up the middle of the field. Joe kept his poise, stayed in the pocket, and slang one. Takes a sack right there, though. Miles Garrett coming around the edge. Of course, just as I mentioned, the defense having trouble to contain them. They get a sack. Yeah, they get a sack. They announce their curse. And get, get used to it. It happens up here. Hopefully, maybe Skim can break the curse when you get, get him up here. Oh, nice fake snap right there by Joe Rice. Didn't go for the offsides. No flag, though, on the play. Trying to step oh, up. Oh, big sack. Down goes. It's Garrett once again in that aggressive pass rush paying off for Nick getting to the quarterback and set him up in the third and long. Yeah, Nick is beast, and you saw there's a coaching adjustment where you can change your pass rush to aggressive, and they'll strictly play the pass and get more pressure on that quarterback. But if you fake snap, you get a chance to get him off sides. Joe Rice tried to fake snap, almost got him to jump off sides, but no dice. 
Third and long, taking what he can Ooh, underneath. Big spin, spin you can't back let inside. this up. Uh, he's going to get a big chunk of that back. Look like 21 back to cut it to a fourth and five. And now a big decision. Looks like uh, Joe Rice going to play conservative and kick the field goal. And that's smart, high-level John Madden football we're talking here. Most people, they see it uh, th third and long. I need to get the first down. No, Joe Rice willing to check down to the drag. Let me get myself back in field goal range. Make this a two-possession ball game. Get back on the defensive side of the ball where I already have two interceptions. Smart Madden right there by Joe Rice. And that's what's this, the fun part about watching these uh, high-level players is everybody, you know, they know the big plays that get made. It's the little things that a lot of these guys do right that yes. that's why they're here in the field of 32. Absolutely, Nick. As a shotgun formation for Nick and the Jags. Trying to respond 10-0. Joe Rice on top. Already on first down, throwing it, looking underneath. Finds Sanders, big hit at the 17-yard line. You can already see Nick going away from his game plan, throwing it on first down instead of pounding the run game. And you'll see that Deion Sanders all over the place. That out-of-position wide receiver, Deion Sanders, he's on 16 of the 32 rosters that we have uh, in this tournament. So he's on 50% of the field's rosters. So that obviously tells you something. If you're looking for a budget speedster for salary cap, Deion Sanders out of position, probably your guy. That's what the best players are doing. It's probably what you should be doing too. The speed demon Dion. As we've hit the two minute warning, a huge drive before the half, trying to cut into this lead down 10, nothing. And As on second and nine, it's Vic dropping back, and Vic sitting down. A little taste of his own medicine as the defense get there. Taylor bringing down Vic, and now back into a third and long. This is not where Nick wants to be. Here's one thing you need to understand, though. Joe Rice can't get complacent here. Our guy Nick is beast to win the Jaguars Club Championship. He was down 24-0 to Madden veteran Jet Steele. And he was able to come back and win that game. So what that tells me is this young man has no quit in him. And he's going to try to battle through it out, but that isn't going to help him none right there as a drag route goes right through, I believe, Deion Sanders' hands after yeah. I'm boasting up Deion Sanders See, right now. The announcer cursing. There it is, can't, man. Can't talk about anybody. Is but the, the point is, he's been in a situation before where he was down 24 nothing against a high-level competitor in a meaningful game, and he was able to overcome that adversity. I'm not saying that he's going to be able to do it here, but you need to be aware that he is capable of it, and if you're Joe Rice, you cannot sleep on him. You still need to play this game very seriously and take Nick very seriously. Joe Rice, though, after Nick had an opportunity to cut into the lead, Joe Rice now with an opportunity to extend the lead before the half. Picking up eight on first down, minute 17, and counting plenty of time for Joe Rice to find the end zone. And for Joe Rice, when he's running this gun punch, he also spent, oh, he takes a sack. Ooh, third sack of the day. Get it out. He got it, he got the ball out, he got the ball out. But what he, when he's running this gun punch, he also spent 85 cap on abilities. All three of his wide receivers have that elite route specialist chemistry. So that tells you, all these top players, they're using that elite route chemistry. There's gotta be some good there. Part of it is it, it's hard to practice against someone that plays with three elite route chems. You're not gonna notice that often. So bang, it's, it's easy. It's not easy to get reps defending against that. He also has the most expensive Mike Vick you can have who is maxed out at 128 cap with both the conductor and gunslinger ability. He also has the energizer on in Shannon Sharp. Fourth and two and Joe Rice picks it up. RG, Joe Rice in the uh, Texans club was 100% on fourth down. You can see it right there. He just knows what play to call when he needs to pick it up. Yeah, he is comfortable in this gun bunch. And one of the things I asked him, I said, I said, you're running the same stuff. He's just That's prolific. Just nuts. You're running the same stuff as young Kip, to who me, me is the most scouted player on the circuit. Everybody's preparing for this type of offense and what he's going to do. He says, that doesn't bother me. And him and Kip both said this because if I'm on top of my game, it doesn't matter if you know what's coming. You still have to stop it. And that's a whole nother task that people aren't willing to deal with as long as I'm making the right reads. And guess what? So far, he's been making the right reads. And so far, point proven by Joe Rice. Joe Rice finding Randy Moss once again uses that final timeout. 34 seconds and counting. Stepping up, looking wow. into the end zone. High pass, touchdown wow. once again. 
And I'll say it again, it's Tyreek the Freak coming down with the catch in the back of the end zone. Joe Rice extending the lead before the half. Yep, and you got to watch out for that in the red zone at that bunch. Once you have that elite route specialist in the bunch and they put him in that slot, people love to throw that deep post route coming over the middle that gets right over those hook zones, but right underneath the deep zones. That's exactly what Joe Rice did right there. The flawless ex execution made sure he threw that high ball, like you said, to get it over the user defender. And Nick is beast. He's going to have to work his comeback magic again because he's got himself in some trouble. There's that high ball. That's beautiful. Tyreek Absolutely the beautiful. Freak. And you see that face right there. That's the face of, boy, 17 nothing. But as you said, Nick knows how to come back in these games. He's not going to quit. And uh, Joe Rice can't overlook a uh, possible comeback as he's going to have to throw this one away. 22 seconds left. He does have all three yeah. timeouts, RG, but it's a tough task getting down the field against this defense. What you really got to be careful about doing here is not turning the ball over, uh, trying to get greedy and letting Joe Rice get additional points. I've seen that happen so often in Madden. If you're Nick, you have to be you have to be careful here. Deep pass left side. Look for oh, hell. Just man. overthrew it. And that one could have been huge down near midfield. But now instead facing a third and 10, and that's a big miss, as that could have been a momentum-changing play. Oh, you you got to think, maybe if he, if he spent a little bit more cap on those receivers, can they get It's a game of inches, and he's had a few plays where they've just been an inch away from making a big difference for him, and it just hasn't happened yet. That's Fournette taking the carry, Nick. He'll take it to the second half. Yeah, comfortable going into halftime. As a hard-fought first half, and uh, we, you look back at this first half, it's it's come down to a couple mistakes. 17 nothing. Joe Rice on top at the half. Uh, an incredibly competitive battle, considering what the score looks like. I think the score is a little deceiving. We've seen Nick trying to establish that run game. Joe Rice using some deep passing, but the big difference is Nick has two turnovers on the day. Joe Rice has turned that into points. Yeah, well, when I tell you, you have high-level players that have told me for the last several years that say, hey, Joe Rice is the most underrated player on the circuit. And that was a good display of why. I mean, Joe Rice played flawless John Madden football right there. He forced, forced turnovers. He picked up first down. He scored touchdowns when he needed them, played smart to take three when he needed to. I mean, Joe Rice is playing on a very, very high level right now, and he is as advertised. And let's take a look at some of those first half highlights from this matchup between Nick and Joe Rice in the AFC South side of the bracket. You see third and three. This was the first mistake, RG. A big interception that turned into seven points for Joe Rice. Yep. And one of the things I just noticed about uh, my guy Joe Rice, you see up there on the score, the score hut, he has that 818. And that's him paying tribute to his brother, True Boy, right there. You got to respect that. And I'll tell you what, True was another one of those guys who told me back in the day that Joe Rice was one of the most underrated players on the circuit. And Joe Rice up here doing his brothers proud. Ten points off of turnovers for Joe Rice in the first half. He's really kept Nick off of his game. We mentioned earlier in the broadcast, look at that high pass back at the end zone. Tyree killed two touchdowns. RG, we mentioned earlier in the broadcast that Nick was going to try to establish this time of possession battle, run the ball, ground and pound. And unfortunately, when you're down 17 nothing going into the second half, he's going to have to make some adjustments. Yeah, he's going to have to make some adjustments. But the, you know what, though? Before you, you do any of that, the first thing you need to do is score a touchdown. Whether you got to run the ball, whether you got to pass the ball, whatever it is, don't worry about none of that. Show yourself that you can put a drive together with your best stuff and get a touchdown and then take it from there. You can't get too ahead of yourself in this type of situation. I'm sure he knows that. It'll just be interesting if he has the tools in his toolbox to make that happen. And this is not the only game going on right now as Rico's got some highlights from the second game going on. Rico, take it away. Hey, thanks, Nick. Thanks, RG. Something serious and Spoto have been battling it out on the, our other game. And it all starts with defense. Fourth and eight, they got the stop. He was able to take back over. You see him with that spin move, whoop, makes another guy miss. Looking to get in that end zone, could not do it, but he's gonna go ahead and take three and go out that early. A lot of people had Spoto as the favorite in this game, but something serious would not be outdone. As you see, miss that pick. You know what happens in Madden. You miss a pick, you give up a touchdown. But Spoto, the savvy bet he is at that young age, kept fighting, gets in the end zone, but wait up. Oh, 
Not going to be outdone yet. He gets a Moss touchdown in the corner of the end zone. Something serious is leading going into the second quarter. But wait, that pick to the flat. God can't throw that Spoda with this level. As you see, he was able to get that pick, turns it into another three points, has a seven-point lead going into the half. Something serious over Spoto. I don't know. Is Spoto going to be able to come back? I'm not sure. But one thing I am sure of is you guys need to do something with that desk. I have only 32 players here. It looks like you have notes on the entire Madden community, all the EA employees, the residents of Redwood City, and everybody else in the entire Bay Area. What's going on, guys? Rico, most of it, I'll be honest, is just trying to remember my own name. I've got most of my name <laughs> written down on all these as uh, a very good battle going on in our second game, a close contest. It's hard not to root for a guy like something serious with the, the hometown fighting for the Titans, but Spoto isn't making it easy. Oh, all I could think about when I'm looking at that highlights is Big George and the rest of the Memphis boys. They got to be going crazy. I'm sure they just popped up out of their seats right there at the watch party at home, but he's making them proud right there. But I'll tell you what, young Spoto, he's going to have his hands full. That is a feisty, feisty young Madden player, and that's going to be a ball game. I'll be looking forward to continuing to see those highlights. As we are ready to send it out to the second half of our game, 17-0. Joe Rice on top, but plenty of time left. You know Nick's going to be looking to come back in this one, stage a big comeback here at the Madden 19 Club Championships. As it looks like it's going to be Joe Rice starting with the ball and while it is 17-0, RG, the, the defense for Nick has actually played pretty well. He's gotten three sacks. It's just been two turnovers, two short fields. It's turned into points. Well, here's the thing. When you're playing a guy like Joe Rice or a young kid, you're going to be able to get sacks because they're not going to force the ball into coverage a lot of the times. They're willing to take that sack in order to prevent themselves from making a bad read. So it's nothing new when you see these guys take a lot of sacks. The question is, can you get your defense off of the field and stop them from getting points? And that's what Nick's going to really have to do on this drive right here. I mean, a touchdown would be detrimental uh, to his chances of winning this game. But if he can get himself a stop and then a score, I mean, he'll be right back in it. Looking over to the left side, finding looks like Gurley out of the backfield. 11 of 14, 169 and two touchdowns. A nearly flawless performance so far for Joe Rice on the offensive side of the ball. Up 17, nothing is trying to get the run game established with a lead here, use some of that clock. And uh, there's not too many better running backs to be trying to get that run game going with than Todd Gurley. Yeah, and I don't, I don't think that's the fully powered up Todd Gurley. I believe they have the 87, 89 overall Todd Gurley over there. But uh, Joe Rice says with that sprinter chem, because he does have a maxed out sprinter. That's a, another thing. Anyone, any of my mutt guys out there, you know about the sprinter chemistry. He's got it at tier three. He says it gets that Gurley to 89 speed, which he feels comfortable with. He's not too slow. He's not too fast, but he's enough to get the job done. Tight catch in coverage. And Boy, that's what Tyreek Hill has done for this offense and Joe Rice. A lot of catches and tight coverage. Two touchdowns on the day. Well, I'll tell you what, Nick. Numbers usually don't lie, and they haven't lied so far. I mean, you have Nick is Beast, who has the 27th ranked pass offense, and Joe Rice, who had the 9th ranked pass defense. So Joe Rice showing why. Uh, Nick's offense, you know, not to throw up the par to slang the ball over the field, but it's Joe Rice's pass offense right now that's been most impressive. Now heading into this third and two, Joe Rice today has faced a lot of these third and manageables, done a nice job of containing the game. 237 and counting, using plenty of clock. And drop back to pass once again. Looks over the middle field, has a man. It's Sharp breaks Ooh. a tackle, shoulder shrug. And Sharp's going to get down to the 11-yard line, going full beast mode on that catch. Yeah, and then after he breaks that tackle, he has that energizer ability, so it fills up his temporary stamina, and then it becomes even more of a problem to take down. And now, once again, Nick's looking for his defense to stand up strong. Hand up to Gurley, up the middle. Big Ooh. spin move. He's into the end zone. Todd Gurley showing off the wheels. The wheels on the bus, they go ground and pound, RG, and it's a big lead for Joe Rice. <laughs> oh, I like that. I see why you won the Caster Showdown. <laughs> I mean, I knew you were already good, but that was a good line. I like that one, Nick. 
filled, filled with jokes and one-liners. That's what I got. The whales on the bus go ground and pound, and that's exactly what they did. And Nick is beast finds himself exactly where he was in the Jaguars semifinals against Jet Steele, down 24 nothing. Look at this one more time. Big hole spin move back to the outside. No chance. As the lead is extended to 24 nothing, what can Nick do here? A minute 57 to go in the third quarter, looking to keep his hopes of winning the Madden Club Championship alive. And that's not going to help as Geno Atkins with a shed up the middle, bringing down Mike Vick, setting up a second and long. This is getting out of line. Nick's going to have to do something here. And we just read the stat off to you. He doesn't have a good passing offense statistically. Joe Rice with one of the better pass defenses statistically. I mean, Nick's just really got himself in a situation. And, and when he came back in the 24-0 deficit, he was going up against Jet Steele, who's a runner-first type player. So that uh, helped him out a little bit because he was able to sell out on defense with Joe Rice. Oh, Balls man, out, that's... turnover. It's going the other way. Third turnover of the day forced by Joe Rice. The strip on Mike Vick, and you can see it in the eyes of Nick. He knows he's in trouble in the third quarter. Oh, poor Nick is beast. And you know what? It's rough because I have a quote from him. Uh, when I interviewed him, he said, you know, all I hope is that I'll be able to give you guys a good one to watch and, and a good one to call. And so far, it just hasn't been going good for him at all. I mean, he is just running into a buzzsaw in Joe Rice right now. I mean, it, this is one of those games. Look at this. Getting near the first down marker. Just going to be shy, it looks like, setting up a third and inches. and. On the flip side, Nick hoping to put on a good battle, but Joe Rice playing at an extremely high level in the first round. Yeah, and then watch. He's not going to snap this ball until there's two or one seconds left on that play clock. He snaps it with three. But th th that's what a good veteran's going to do. He's just going to milk this clock away, get this game over with. We're going to the fourth quarter. Little H2O. Got to hydrate. Stay hydrated on the football fields and on the Madden sticks as we have reached the end of the third quarter. And... This one, Joe Rice in firm control. 24-0 the score. As uh, RG, I mean, what's there to say? Uh, Joe Rice, uh, this isn't a, a, an example of Nick playing particularly poorly. Joe Rice is just playing phenomenally well and is running his offense at an elite level. Well, what I'll tell you now is if I'm the rest of the field, you really got to start paying attention to these guys because we said, we told you, Crush, Joe Rice, Kiv Mo, all running the same game plan. And so far, Crush looking very, very efficient in his first game getting the job done. And obviously, we see what Joe Rice is doing. And we haven't even gotten to see young Kiv or Sirius Mo, two of the greatest Madden players of all time yet. So this little crew that they got going on right now, uh, they're looking like there's something serious uh, to be reckoned with. We head back to the fourth quarter and... Joe Rice in firm control. The Todd Gurley train getting rolling. Nine carries, 41 yards, and that touchdown we just saw a few plays ago. 24-0, a big lead. And if you're back in the players lounge, man, you're watching Joe Rice play. This is just first round Joe Rice. You gotta think uh, as you get to the later rounds, as it looks like he's gonna move on, man. He's gonna amp it up even more. Yeah, absolutely. I mean it for, for Nick is beast, here's the thing. You need to take it as a learning experience. It's your first live event. You will be back. I mean, he labs with one of the best up-and-coming players that I think is on the circuit in CJ, who Joe Rice actually beat in the Texans Club Championship Finals. So Nick is beast, CJ, these are guys that I expect to see more and more of, especially CJ. I mean, he had a phenomenal showing at that Madden Classic, but these are going to be two players that should stick around, use it as a learning experience. Uh, but yeah, right now it's just all, all Joe Rice. All Joe Rice, but you can't forget if you're on the side of Nick that he ended up being in the top 32 and that's nothing to shake a stick at. His first live event for Nick and as you said, RG just running into a buzzsaw. Here's something you could relate to though. I like the story with Nick is Beast and CJ is these are guys that met playing online franchise. They weren't even competitive players. And you know something about an online franchise. With, with I've dabbled. NBA. He's dabbled in an online franchise. And, you know, they, they had some good games in the franchises. They both were some of the toughest players in the franchise. They started talking, and they said, hey, 
we should start practicing with each other and get ready for this MCS stuff that we're seeing and kind of, you know, we'll still play our franchise, but let, let, let's let's dabble in this competitive stuff. And in their first years playing, both of them already have had some really good success. CJ making it to the finals of the Texans Club Championship against Joe Rice. I believe he made the final eight of the Madden Classic. He's such a good player. Every time I watch him, I'm so impressed. And Nick is beast, makes it as one of the top 32 players and represents the Jacksonville Jaguars. Comes here, pocket it's five grand get some experience so I, I really love that type of story the camaraderie and the growth that these Madden players have amongst each other just phenomenal stuff yeah it's certainly awesome to see coming from the franchise side seeing guys starting out in the franchise side coming over to the competitive side and exactly Madden really is a community is a quick toss over the middle at this point I, I think Nick's sort of in the mode of let's break up the shutout and try to get some points here in this live event Definitely get some points. I'll give you. You want here's something. What do you think Nick's favorite meal is? It's Italian. I'm gonna go with lasagna. Whoa! Right on the head. Whoa! It's it's the Nick and Nick connection. I think the Nick I and Nick connection. He says it's a lasagna with meat sauce that's got to be homemade by his best friend Brad. Said they've been friends for a long time, and you have to have the grated cheese and the pepper. I'll let Brad know he can come over to my house anytime and make some lasagna. Deep pass left side. This one's going to go out of bounds looking for Julio Jones down the field. I don't think I ever had any friends that made any good food. I think all my friends just made microwave stofers. Love That's <laughs> got, all I got. I got some friends that can cook, man. My, my one my one buddy, I mean, he makes a mean gumbo. The chicken, the sausage, the andouille. A little white rice underneath there. Oh, it's the good stuff. As... Nick looking to put some points on the board, down 27-0. Joe Rice in firm control, but certainly a valiant, valiant effort from Nick. Quick pass to the flat to Fournette. Nick's a big, uh, he, he said, you know, fantasy football is what really got him into the NFL. But, he, he, you know, being from South Carolina, he's a big Gamecocks fan. He's looking for Will Muschamp to turn it back around and uh, he's excited for that NCAA season next year. The other USC out of South Carolina, third and nine. Joe Rice looking on, they're gonna hit the two minute warning. And now looking forward, RG, uh, guys in the players lounge watching this, uh, Joe Rice, he's gotta come off as a guy that nobody wants to face right now. Oh, I, I could agree with that. I mean, his offense has been so good. And remember, you want to talk about credentials. Not only did he win, you see him get some pressure Defense again. Getting after him. And not only did he win the Texans Club Championship, he couldn't make the Madden Classic due to a school obligation. He's currently uh, in college, you know, sp studying some business management. Um, but he, in the Mudhead seasons, Mudhead is, uh, if you don't know about Mudhead, they're, they're a phenomenal website that helps, you know, give you a ton of information around the Mud mode. And they, they put on these seasons, these leagues with some of the top players in the country. When I'm talking cream of the crop, I'm talking cream of the crop. Joe Rice won that season this year already. I believe it's a $10,000 prize. It's a nice prize pool. I don't know exactly what it was, but he won that. So that shows you he's already able to get into these leagues of these seasons with cream of the crop elite competition and prevail. So he has some experience in winning championships. And I, I can, long story short, I can agree with you. If I'm in the players' lounge, I'm not trying to play young Wesley Gittins up there. Kind of love seeing a guy. His Look at him. Curly oh, just class. takes it down and... Run like this a, clock out. Didn't he do that in the real? Uh, yep, the he real did. Season? Uh, he if you have him in fantasy here in Madden, you're you're mad now. You're, just like you're, you you're angry NFL. about that. I hope we get that at some point. Some Madden oh, that would be so fantasy cool. football. Uh, you know what we need? If you're in the back and someone that can make these decisions next year for this competition. I need a bracket challenge. I want people to be able to submit their brackets and tell me who, who has the better bracket. And maybe if you get the perfect bracket, you get a prize. This is something me and Rico were talking about at dinner. And, and we, we started bantering back and forth. So now I'm on the air and I'm putting the pressure on whoever makes those decisions. That next year, I need a bracket challenge. How think, about that? I think we can get Warren Buffett to put up that billion dollar prize for the perfect Madden bracket. Look at that show of respect right there, though. You got to love that. Big show of respect. Is Joe Rice going to join us at the Desk. He comes up with a huge win in round one of the Madden 19 Club Championships, 27 to nothing over Nick. The the buzz saw Joe Rice that offense and RG. It, it ended up being all about turnovers. Turnovers the big difference in this game. Oh, 
turnover is going to be the big difference in any football game, but we see Joe Rice, it was about the turnovers, it was about the offense, it was about this young man continuing to be prolific, and I think we talked about it. If you're back there in the players' lounge, this is one young man I don't think you're going to want to trifle with on those sticks. As Joe Rice joins us in the desk, congratulations on your win. Uh, take us through how you're feeling right now. Big win in the first round and moving on to the second round. Well, I mean, I knew he was running chips tight end. We labbed really hard for it, and the defense really did what it was supposed to do. I was, yeah. I was really happy with it. Absolutely a phenomenal performance, set in some sort of tone. Let's go back to the first quarter. You get mm -hmm. that interception on the first drive after Nick was really pounding the ball with Leonard Fournette. Yeah. What did that do for your game plan moving forward? Oh, it was huge because if he gets points that drive, he can he can run the ball the rest of the He can keep running the ball and play his game, and I feel like that really took him out of his run game, which was made, made defense easier for me. So what I got to think, Joe, is you handled business and went to mm -hmm. according to plan here. What do you expect to see in this next matchup uh, between Spoto and Sun Sirius? Was there any of them that you were looking forward to facing? Did you have a prediction there? Are, are you ready for both players? Uh, what's your thought on that? Well, Spoto, Spoto's more experienced. You know, he's been here before, so everyone's expecting Spoto to win, and he's actually running trips tight end just like Nick. So I'm actually like, that's how I look forward to playing. Okay, so you did tell me that. You're ready for that trips tight mm -hmm. end, you feel. But if Sun Sirius was to pull that out, you don't feel too comfortable about your scouting report on him, huh? I, I, I would go back and watch it because I don't play Thursday either, so I'd have a whole day to, you know, get, get something ready for him. Cool. And, and I, I know you'd get ready. <laughs> Let's take a look at the highlights from this first round matchup. Joe Rice and Nick, a big AFC South battle, and they're on the first drive, a huge interception, setting the tone early, defense and turnovers. Uh, Joe, you got this touchdown to Tyreek Hill. Hill was huge for you all day. Oh, yeah, he's... He's honestly, other than Moss, the best receiver in the game. As here on second down, you see that high pass back in the end zone. Once again, Tyreek, the freak hill, and then the run game gets involved. Todd Gurley at six, spin move. Uh, Joe, it, it turned out it was almost a flawless performance, 27-0. You can't get much better than that in the first round. Oh, yeah. I, I honestly played almost perfect. I made one bad read. Uh, I was out three verticals. I hit the wrong button. He actually he should have got a pick on it. I think it was up in the third quarter. But other than that, I, honestly, I felt like I played great on both sides. Well, yeah, to the to the casual fans, by the way, uh, it's great to hear one of the great players say they hit the wrong button because I do that about five times a game. Yeah, it, it happens. Uh, he used the he used the tight end. And I still hit it. Like, like I was like staring at the uh, that was open. I just hit the wrong one. It was terrible. How about we got a shout out to Texas? I mean, you got the custom jersey. It's the they you can't see it. It's got the Joe oh, yeah, Rice on the, on the back, back right there. That, that is pretty. And you said they've taken care of you. What mm -hmm. Deshaun Watson yeah. signed football? I mean, what's it been like to represent these Houston Texans? And how have they been treating you? Oh, the Texans have been great the whole time. When I was there they gave me a you know, this jersey which is custom jersey which is all, always awesome to get absolutely and then when they uh when they mailed me the check that, that i got yep. they, they sent a sign to sean watson football with it and then and then today they uh, shouted me out on twitter talking about telling everyone to tune into the game oh i love that yeah the texans have been really great that's awesome well they got a really great competitor representing them i'll tell you that much let's let's take a look at the calendar uh, as we look forward